and welcome to Violet Connie Art. Today I'm going to show you how I buy my books for using for watercolour or for whatever sketching, whatever paper you want to put in it. This one I'm making for my son and it's got bleed proof uh, blending card in it for Copic markers and he's joining in uh, Inktober so that's why I'm making this one for him. So I first start off with 16 sheets of the paper that I want. I chose 16 because double 16 is 32 and that'll give enough pages for Inktober and then I go about folding each one of these pages in half as neatly as I can. So all the bits for this my son chose so he chose the colors and what he wanted to put in it and to be able to participate. After I felt folded each page that was a bit it's a bit bulky so you want to actually firm down each of the edges I just use the end of my craft knife and but um, but you can actually use any kind of uh, hard tool that you have to be able to do this and then you see that they are nice and neatly all stacked together so after I've done that I grab, get four of the pages and I actually nestle them together and when you nestle the pages together like this uh, for a book this is known as a signature for this book there's 16 pages so Four lots of four equals 16 and so I'll have four signatures of four pages each. Once I've nestled them together I want to re-crease with the tool to make sure it's nice and firm and it's all folded nicely. And I repeat this for all four piles and then I put them together always keeping throughout this whole process the folded edge together. I actually re-recording this voiceover because I recorded this already and I didn't press record. After that you get um, two pages of just regular paper. I just use normal printer paper but sometimes I use coloured paper. It all depends. If you use coloured paper make sure the coloured side's on the inside when you fold it for this part. These pages go on the front and the back of your book. After this I get just a scrap piece of paper that I had lying around, an A4 piece, it needs to be the same size as the paper that you've got and I fold a crease along it, it doesn't have to be measured or anything, it just needs to be a crease and then I draw a line along that crease. Then I measure spaces for holes and these are the holes that I'm going to be using to sew, sew my signatures together and sew the pages together. You can just do anything you want, I did a one inches, uh, one inch dots from the top and the bottom and then I did one in the center. They don't really need to be even, you just need to have the holes there and make sure that they're all lined up afterwards. Now I use a little makeup sponge and a, a needle to poke the holes into this piece of paper. Before I had the makeup sponge I would sometimes just take my pieces of paper over to the couch and use the couch as a the backing sponge to poke the holes. After this I discard the top and the bottom pages for later and I one at a time get the signatures. I pop my template for the holes inside and I poke the holes into, into and through all four pages of my signature. Now you want to make sure that the holes go all the way through um, and uh, their pages are all nicely and neatly stacked together. And check that the holes are actually poked all the way through when you've done and I complete this for all four signatures that I have in my book stack. Once you have them all together you want to make sure that the holes line up with each other and then I usually just mark along one side of my stack of signatures to make sure that when I sew them together that I'm putting them together in the right order. With the right side down. I just use regular cotton thread to thread uh, my signatures together, to sew them together, sorry. And I used eight lengths of the cotton, the same height as the book. And this gave me plenty of cotton to use. So I thread the needle and I double the string over and tie a knot in the end. 
You want the knot to be really quite large and you'll see why in a moment but the knot needs to be large so that it doesn't pull through to the other side and we can use that knot later. So you first start off by going in one end of the signature down the bottom and you go from the back through to the middle going through all of the pages of that particular signature. You then weave all the way along so you go in and out all the way to the top of that page I'll speed it up a bit here just to get through it but you weave all the way along and then when you get to the end uh, make sure you always undo knots along the way as well I did that uh, quite a lot as long as you undo them as you go and keep checking you're right and once you get to the end you want to weave back down through the holes So always ensure that along the way that you keep your string untangled and pulled through very um, firmly. It doesn't need to be tight but firm so that there's no loose ends. When you get to the back down to the knot, you want to slip your needle underneath the knot in between the two strands and pull that nice and firmly. And that's the first signature done. This is the only signature that you will sew in this way. The, all the other signatures are sewn in a different way, but they're all sewn the same um, from this point onwards. So you line them up, line up the dots that you'd previously made and make sure that you've got your pages around the right way. And then go from the back through to the middle. And then back out the next hole. You want to go down underneath the string of the previous signature and around that particular stitch and then after that go back in the same hole that you've come from and this attaches the first signature to the next one. Now I actually tried to get a close-up of the string being sewn around the previous signature but the white cotton did not show up but you can see that you just go down and around and then back through each time and then go to the next hole and you repeat this for all of your signatures at the end it gets a little bit tricky the more pages that you have sewn together um, but you just go out through the hole underneath the previous stitch and back through the same hole you came and continue that right until the end Now I got a little knot there but I actually knew that I would have enough string so I didn't worry about it too much and just continued on and pulled the knot through. Once you've gotten to the end you just need to wrap the end of your string around the previous stitches quite a lot just to secure it. Once this has been done it's actually going to be glued together. so. It doesn't really need to be nice and neat on this side. Just kind of secure. Once all of them are sewn together, you want to go back through your pages and just turn through and make sure that there's no loose strings. If there is any loose strings, you want to pull them through to the spine of the book, to the outside, so that when you glue the pages together they that will be hidden and they'll also be secured 
Then you want to grab the two pieces of paper, one for the front and one for the back that you put aside before and put a very fine bead of glue and it's just regular craft group glue that I'm using white glue along one edge. If I'm doing a watercolor book I do use waterproof glue so that it won't get ruined if it gets water on the binding and ruin my book but for just regular sketchbooks or Copic marker books like this one I just use the regular craft glue. Always making sure that you put the folded edge to the folded edge and do another bead on the other side so you've got those back and front cover pages secured to your book and these actually help with binding the book to the cover which we're about to make in a minute. Secure them down with some clips which is very handy and then glue the spine of the book all the way along. I do it in sections just so that the spine is held together as tightly as possible throughout that process so that the book is um, as tightly bound as possible along the spine. Once I've glued a section I put the clip on and then I'll move to another section and do that. And also make sure that when you uh, use your paintbrush to smooth the glue down that you secure any loose strings that are there or any that you've had to pull through to the back that might have been loose before. Continue this process all the way along and then after that you can set your book aside to dry while we make the cover. Next we're going to make the cover of the book. So first you need to measure how um, big the cover is going to be. You want it to have a little bit of overhang of, around the book. So I'm doing going to do mine 8.5 inches by 5.8 inches. You want the front of the cover, the, um, the width of the book to be uh, the exact same as the page size. And I'm going to trim a little bit off those once it's dry so that's how far across my book is going to be. So you want to make two cover pieces and one for the edge. I measured 4.4 of an inch for the spine of the book and every time I make a new book I always measure new measurements because they can always be just slightly different even if you're making the same size pages. So this strip for the spine is 0.4 of an inch by 8.5 of an inch. Then I do the cover pieces. These uh, pieces of cardboard were not square so I just used a right angled triangle just to make some nice straight right angled side so that I have a nice spot to start measuring from. And then I make these squares 8.5 inches by 5.8 inches. And I do this twice. And I always measure twice, cut once, because I hate it when I've cut and I realize I've done it wrong. So if you're always unsure, if you so if you're ever unsure, make sure you just do it again. After that, I'm going to cut a scrap piece of paper from the A4. I did a three-inch um, wide strip and then I just trimmed a little bit off the top so that it was a little bit shorter than A4 and then I put line my cover up like this and I put 0.3 of an inch space between the spine and the each book cover side and then clean up the edges and I've now I've glued that together you can actually cover your book however you want from this point um, my son chose this um, pinkish purple uh, cardboard for the cover and so I decided to keep that color for him and then he chose this blue and I measured a three inch strip for the spine of the book just to cover this spine up but often when I'm doing a watercolor book I will just cover the whole thing in brown paper or another colored paper that I have just to make it beautiful 
The main thing is, is that you crease in along this spine part, just in here like this. Otherwise, you can just cover this like you would be covering a book that you would for school and um, decorate it however you want. Paint it, um, make it beautiful, make it your own. So here I'm just decorating this book for my son. I was actually going to make it one of these books for myself, but I really wanted mixed media paper in it and I didn't have any, so use a book that I already had. Um, I actually made another one of these for Inktober with regular drawing paper in it for somebody else I know um, in a similar fashion. And the decoration on the cover is a little bit different and the colours are a bit different but the process is always the same whether I'm making a watercolour book or um, a book for a Copic marker paper I always use this same kind of process. After you've decorated your book and you've got everything on it exactly how you would like it, then you have to crease the spine and um, you have to make sure that it's well creased so that when you have your final product your book opens and closes the best way it possibly can and it also helps in um, making sure that when you paste in your uh, signature stack that it's in nice and straight. So you kind of want to zigzag fold it, recrease anything that you need to crease and just make sure that it's nice and flexible and has the look of a bookend. You can kind of see when you're making it whether or not it looks like a, a bookend should. So now my glue's dry on my signature stack and I pull off my clips and I get a pencil and I measure across 5.8 inches for this particular book and then I get a very sharp Stanley knife or a hobby knife and I very slowly, this is sped up, but I very slowly cut through these pages. You actually want a really sharp knife for this. I have tried to do it with a blunt knife and it just ruins the ends of your pages and your end book ends up getting shorter and shorter because you have to keep retrying to do it. So it's best to have a sharp knife from the get-go and just slice along to give a nice finished edge. After that you want to get a scrap piece of paper and just slide it between the first and second sheet of your page and then put plenty of glue on that top sheet and spread it around. You want to be quite liberal with the glue because this is what's going to attach your book to the cover and make it secure. So I just smush all of the glue around making it as smooth as I possibly can so there's not as many lumps and then I line it up with the edges and the side of my book and press it down firmly. Then I repeat this process for the top cover but I, so I put the page in the between the first and second page I put the glue on and then I smooth it out with my paintbrush I remove the scrap piece of paper and then instead of positioning the stack of paper onto the cover I actually close the cover onto the book how I want it to be. I firm it down and there you have a completed book. It just needs to be set aside to dry. So, as I said, this is for Inktober for my son. It's got bleed proof paper in it. Just one page for each day. And he's asked me to write the prompt at the top of each day for him. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.